All right, let's do some critiques of our nulled bones. And to validate that I'm not going to spare myself from criticism, I'll start with mine. So everyone here is going to get equally harsh treatment. <laughs> but in general, I loved this project. This project was awesome, and there were so many good... Uh, there's so many good assignments that you guys turned in that I'm just gonna really love talking about these projects. So overall, mine looks pretty good, but there are definitely some major mistakes that I made that I'm realizing now as I look back at this. And this is a good habit to get into, and you'll start to see this is after you make a piece, after you think it's done, come back a week later and look at it, and look at it very slowly, and enjoy looking at it. It's your own piece of art, look at it and try to figure out what it was you did wrong and what it was you did right. That's sort of the nature of the critique is you're just trying to be honest and you're trying to figure out what did I do wrong and what did I do right, okay? And I did this one pretty fast. I tried to get this one done in the four hour session and there are certainly some flaws with respect to that. There's no cross hatching. So that is an issue actually that I think that weakens this piece. Bones by nature are just sort of naturally receptive to cross hatches. Cross hatching always looks really good on bones. And I didn't I didn't do that here just because I didn't have time to do it. I kind of just did a quick stipple and a quick gray and a quick gray wash. So that's one criticism is none of these bones are are um cross hatched and they really should. Anytime you're working with bones, you have to cross hatch. Okay, it's a must. This is, of course, the rule set by the great Jose Posada, right? Okay, so just, just take note. Anytime you work with bones, you must cross-hatch. So that's the first criticism of my piece. The second crit criticism is look at my mandible. I did this wrong, okay? So I, and it was because of the way that I was looking at it. And I think it's because I was looking at I was looking at images like this, where I was looking at mandibles like this, and then if you look at mine, okay, that makes sense. But then I thought I'm not sure if it's actually like this. This is how this is how the mandibles come together in the rat. It should it should look like this if it's sitting up like that. But I think what happened is they ripped apart. They ripped the mandible in half. So actually, what you're seeing here is a mandible ripped in half. So I guess now that I think about it more, maybe it's not a it's not a complete criticism, but there's one thing I didn't see, I didn't perceive, is that the mandible should look like this, um, and I guess what I was drawing was sort of a different thing that most people wouldn't see, where it, these mandibles had been like ripped in half. The other thing I skipped was again I was trying to finish this fast, so this was a mistake of trying to get things done too quickly. I skipped all the vertebrae. So there's no vertebrae in, in my old rat. Um, and again, this was just a sort of a pragmatic thing in a sense that I feel like I have less time. Um, so I needed to get this done quickly. So I just didn't do the vertebrae, but that's a legit criticism is that I didn't get all the bones. Now, another thing you're gonna see, and, and I don't mind too much, but another thing you're gonna see is you're gonna see stuff like this. Like if you if you zoom in here, um, look at look at the mandible. Look at how sloppy this uh, <laughs> this colored in and is. It's so sloppy, and the reason it's sloppy is because the way that I the way that I was coloring this in is I grabbed the magic wand tool and I clicked on a region like right out here, and then I selected the inverse so that it would hopefully select inside all of my bones. And it did that for the most part, but it didn't do it for all of them. So like here, you can see there's a break. And I talked about this in the selection tools or in the in the gray washes video. If there's a break in the line like this, you won't be able to select inside of that object. And so that's why in all the ones where there was a break, here's the break in this one where the lines don't connect. Here's the break in this one where the lines don't connect. In all the ones where it's not completely connected, the shading is really sloppy because I was trying to do it quickly. Whereas in the ones where, in the bones where they were complete, like these ones up top here, the shading is a little bit, is a little bit better in, in these ones up top because they're completed, completed squares. So that was again, an error of speed. When I was drawing these shapes, I didn't take time to complete 
the shape and, and close it, which is always a good idea when you're doing your line drawings because you know you're going to come back later and you're going to do your gray washes. So always take the time then to do it. The other thing is because of that, when I did the drop shadow, you get these really weird effects where um, it's almost like the, the color is off. Like I couldn't color in the lines. Now, again, it's, it's this, it's the root of this error is the same. It's a, it's a selection issue and I was trying to go too quickly. And it doesn't actually bother me that much. And the reason it doesn't bother me, the reason it doesn't bother me is because I kind of consider myself a printmaker. And so printmakers are kind of like famous for really sloppy coloring because the coloring is done by setting up multiple plates and you have to align the plates perfectly. And if the plates aren't aligned perfectly, you get effects that, that look kind of like this where the color's a little bit off. So again, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me too much, but it's a legitimate criticism. If I if I was spending more time, um, I probably wouldn't have done done it like that. This is sort of a reflection of the fact that uh, my roots are in printmaking. So overall, successful piece here, but definitely lots of criticisms in the sense that there's no cross hatching. It's pretty sloppy. You can tell I was trying to do it fast, and some of the bones. And some of the shading effects really reflect that. All right, let's look at this one. Wow, this one is really good, really amazing. This is what I'm saying about really took the time to do really good cross hatching. This student also implemented what I said you could do, add a little bit of sepia tone, and you can tell it looks really nice. Really good work here. And look what's happening. So in this layer, there they're experimenting with very, very subtle color effects, which I like a lot. I like that they're going into the nuances of doing really subtle things and asking themselves if they like it or not. They're also doing, I think it's this layer. Yep, they're doing, they're coming back in and doing layers of lights over top. So they originally colored and then they came in with a white and they're actually adding highlights on top. So again, really implementing what I discussed about layering detail. You can go dark with things, and then after you go dark, you come put a layer on top and you implement some highlights. So doing that to a very successful degree here. Good clean lines. So look at the clean lines. If I take off the, the crosshatch stipple layer, very good clean lines. Everything looks fantastic. And with a nice drop shadow effect. So very beautiful, very, very good, excellent work. All right, let's look at this one. Excellent, excellent stippling here, excellent shading. Like this bone, this bone here is amazing. Let me zoom in on this. Look at that bone. That is amazing in itself. Okay, so this is fantastic shading, fantastic shading work. Fantastic stippling work. I th I'm pretty sure it's a turtle. We, we had a lot of people do turtles. People really like turtles in this class. Um, and I think this is the shell split apart. But I do have a criticism about something that was done and it makes it look a little bit strange. So I gather what happened is when they did the shading on this turtle shell, I gather that it was either originally aligned properly or it was... Um, it was sort of like lined up and what they did is they picked a they picked a light spot and then they shaded it but then what happened is as they arranged the pieces and did the knolling what you'll notice is they rotated certain piece, pieces of the turtle shell and so now actually the lighting is off because if the light's coming from here then this makes sense because it's dark on this side this makes sense because it's dark on this side this makes sense because it's dark on this side but then it doesn't make sense on this part which was rotated because now if the light is still coming from over here what you're seeing is it's darkest over here so the flaw here that was done was they had all these pieces lined up they did the shading first and then they rotated them not realizing that as you rotate you're obviously then changing the way that the light would hit that so if this was to be done perfectly, what you'd have to do is you'd have to arrange all the pieces where you want them to be, and then you have to do individual shading on each such that the light's all coming from one actual source. And that's the only flaw here that I'm pointing out in this one. All right, here's a great blue heron, another one that's fantastic. Look at, look at, look at the skull. Let's zoom in on the skull. 
really good combinatorial effects here of stippling, cross hatching over here, and then cross hatching of highlights over here. So just really, really good combinatorial effects of everything that I had discussed. Uh, so just very, very successful piece here. A nice, nice wishbone. I like the wishbone. <laughs> I would also point out here, again, you're going to start to notice how nice it looks when people rewrite their text as actually if, as if they're writing it or drawing it. So this is not typed out text. This is text that was written and handwritten text always looks way better in sort of artistic pieces because it matches the inherent sort of naturalness of your lines. Whereas if you're importing actually like typed text, it always looks strange. It always looks foreign. Whereas this one, the label, Great Blue Heron. It looks really good. It looks like it fits within, and that's because it was hand-drawn text. Um, the only criticism, well, it's not really a criticism. It's a stylistic thing you might choose. There's no shadows in this. There's no, there's no shadows. Um, and I think this project sort of naturally lends itself to, to having shadows, and I think it would contribute a little bit. So that's the only criticism I have is uh, there could have been a little bit more work in putting putting shadows of these, of these bones falling onto the paper underneath. But overall, extremely successful, extremely good, good work here. Look at this one. This one is really interesting. And this is probably the most unique one in the sense that nobody else sort of like approached it this way. So I think this one is really interesting. So obviously a snake and the snake is going to have essentially like a skull, a billion different vertebrae and a billion different ribs, which is really cool because this person actually took the time to like count the ribs and to count the vertebrae and to do it properly. So I like that about this. I also think in this person you're seeing an, a real good improvement in quality of the drawing. So the skull is done very, very effectively, very nice. But I would say, here's a couple ways they could have improved this a little bit more. Let me zoom in on the skull. Get a little bit closer here. The skull is pretty gray. There's no white whites in the skull, okay, and bones. If they're, if, if they're treated properly, become very, very white, okay? And so they could have come back in to do some white highlights, maybe here, maybe in these regions here, in this region here, and maybe, maybe in a couple pieces in some of the teeth. So I came back in, uh, I made a layer, and then I just kind of like showed you as an example like what could be done. So here's a layer coming back in, adding some highlights on, off on off on see do you see how just coming back in adding some real nice white highlights can really contribute to the three-dimensionality of the of the skull um, so that's just one critique that I think could have been done just a little bit better but overall quite a nice piece here and lots of improvement in this student so this is one of the few students who chose to do a machine instead of the bones. So nulling the components of a machine here. Wow, this one turned out really amazing. This one is really, really stunning. One of the things about this piece is bones are really naturally lend themselves to be drawn with organic lines. So it doesn't matter if, you're, if your line is a little jagged or your line's a little wobbly. Bones is sort of naturally are like that. But this person is drawing rigid machine type structures which are almost perfect squares or perfect circles and that's actually really difficult to do so this person really did a great job in taking the time going slow and getting the outlines and the structures of the shapes perfect I do have some criticism of the drop shadow effect so what this what this person did is they individually drew each component and then they did I think a drop shadow on each layer which is what you're seeing now that would only that's only valid if each of these is sort of standing at the same height off the paper which we know is not true one of these things is either i don't can't tell which is the computer sort of uh box but whatever is the computer box is probably going to be the highest item and therefore should have the tallest shadow so just a critique of sort of the arrangement of these things um in such it is null in such a way that the shadows are actually not contributing because they're sort of what they're doing is they're m making it actually confusing to the eye because this thing should be really high and the shadow is only tiny whereas this thing the motherboard should be really low and the shadow is low to match so the shadow matches this but
but the shadow does not match this one. Okay, and so that's the same same thing with the speakers. Speakers would be sticking like high up and they're kind of shrunk down and the shadow is kind of suggesting that they're very, very thin speakers, which we know is not the case. So I would say a couple issues with the shadows here. Uh, on the headphones, these could really benefit from a highlight here. We know the headphones are round. Round things need for sure need highlights. Let me see if I can demo how, how I would approach this. So I would have grabbed the soft round brush. This is a case where I would grab the soft round brush, okay? And I would grab pure white, um, and I would probably just set it to a higher opacity, maybe like 60%. Let me see what kind of a, let's see how this looks. I'm doing this pretty quick. But now see, look at that. I mean, look at that zoomed out. That is, that's by far better than off on. And it might be a little bit, it might be a little bit too much. So you might reduce the opacity a little bit, you know, something like that. But off, on. Round things need highlights, okay? I would do the same thing with the mouse. So again, just little mistakes. This literally took me like, you know, 10 seconds to do, add this little layer. Um, and that can, can that contributes a lot because now these actually feel round, whereas here they feel very, very flat, okay? But overall, this project was really amazing, really stunning, and um, significant improvement here on this student from the last project. And the final thing I would say about this is, is this is a really good example of why when I assign these challenges in the assignments, you really want to do something that you're passionate about. You really want to pick a project um, a project topic that you really want to do, that you really like want to spend time on because then you're gonna end up with something like this that you're really proud of. Um, and, and so just continue on with that pattern for the rest of the class is what I would encourage you. All right, so here's another machine project. Again, these projects are extremely challenging in a sense that when you're working with non-natural objects, you have to do the lines perfectly and that's one of the big challenges here. So I think this person largely very succeeded in, you have to do essentially what you'd call, I guess in drawing, non-organic lines, okay? And, and so this person I think really succeeded in, in doing the non-organic lines. So that's, <clears throat> excuse me, that's a really good thing about this project. But I do have some criticisms. Um, so if we zoom in, if we zoom in, you can see that these lines are actually kind of pixelated and that does sort of, what you saw? What would you say? Um, distract. It distracts from the 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 hard shapes that you find in sort of like metallic objects. The fact that it's pixelated makes it feel a little bit less real. So one of the things that this student could have done a little bit differently is they could have drawn these lines with the pen tool, and the pen tool would have produced sort of perfect vector-based lines which are then going to make them not pixelated. So I, I would, if you're, if you're gonna be drawing sort of like a machine object, that might be really the ideal case in which you use the actual pen tool rather than drawing with like your stylus. But I don't think this person was drawing with the stylus. I'm not sure how they generated, I'm not, I don't quite know how they generated these lines because they're definitely like perfect shapes, except for the fact that they're pixelated. So that, that needs to be fixed. The other thing that's happening here is the same issue with the, that was the same issue with the last one, is that they're drawing metallic objects and many of these are sort of like round and they would have a sheen. So a sheen means like if a light hit it, it would, it would shine off and it would have a reflective surface. So that has not been completely captured. And so like, like in the bike frame, like let's zoom in, in the bike frame, you would expect to for sure see some highlights here like I showed in the last one, because it's a rounded object, okay? So that, that could just be as easy as coming in with the pen tool and doing doing individual highlights and gray washes around the shape of the object to make it such that it's round. And it peers round and the sheen from the light reflects that. Also like these chain wheels, like the chain wheels would, would for sure be shiny, whereas they feel very flat and that's not how they would appear in, in real life. So we're gonna get, when we get into the color section, we will do specific um, technique focuses where we actually focus on developing sheen and reflectiveness and, and texture on objects, but we're not quite there yet. So I think this student has a lot of room to improve going forward in the future in the next challenges, and I would encourage them to 
to try to attack those issues later in the next challenges. But overall, this is a really great project, really successful. So great work here. And just a final note, for some reason when I open up some of these projects, the drop shadow effects that they do, the distance is different in my version. So I had, so if I change the distance, this is probably how it actually looked when the student made it. So overall, it looks very, very good. All right, so this one, I don't want to say too much about it because this one is what I would say is it's not complete. And I don't like, I don't like commenting on artistic pieces that are not complete because essentially what I would be commenting on is just a line drawing. So that's all I'll say about this one is this one, this one is a really good start. It just needs a lot more work and then it, I think it would be done. And she talked to me about this and, and that was sort of, she, she discussed and said this one was not done yet. So that's all I'll say about this one. All right, let's talk about this one. I think overall pretty successful, but I do have some issues. One, the first thing, actually the, which is kind of annoying is the darkest points on this are actually the text. So really you don't ever, again, like the, importing the element, importing the text makes it feel like this, this sort of doesn't belong here because it's sort of out of its universe in a couple different ways. It's out of its universe in a sense that none of the lines and the actual drawing are actually as dark or as thick as the text. So it feels, this is immediately where my eyes are drawn. The text is kind of distracting in the sense that immediately my eyes are drawn here and they're so dark that I, my eyes are not sort of like released to the rest of the image, okay? So I would, I would not import real bold, fat text, especially when sort of the line, the style of this artist is very, very fine lines, okay? So it's kind of dangerous to import real fat text if your style is very, very fine line pen drawing. But I can shut that off, so shut that off, easy fix. And now what I would say about the overall piece is, again, so you want to get to the point where you really are able to utilize high contrast high contrast. And by high contrast, I mean like dark, dark, thick blacks. So what I would want to see in the future for this artist is I would challenge them to, after they get to this point, I would come back in with a dark brush and I would, I would add some like actual really dark regions of their piece. Okay. Cause right now, because I would sort of consider this this image at this point sort of like not done. Again, just not enough contrast. So I would challenge this person in the next projects moving forward. Really challenge yourself to come in and use a dark, dark black brush. And after you get to this point where your sort of your line drawings are done, come in and make some dark blacks and see if you can utilize cross hatching and gray shading to really push the three dimensionality of your line drawings. Because right now, like the line drawings are very, very good, but this person has not quite mastered shadow effects and shading to the point where they can get a real push and pull of the three dimensionality of the objects. So I'd challenge this person, next project, come in and do some real, real darks with some real fat brushes. All right, so here's another one where I think, I think again, the criticism is kind of similar to the last one in a sense that I still feel like this one is not quite done. So if you look at which bones do I think are, are the most are the best, and I think it's these ones, and that's because the contrast in these ones feels the most complete. They have the dark, dark blacks, okay, and they have some real white lights. Whereas some of these other bones, these ones in particular, these ones, they feel that they feel a much, much flatter. Although there is lots of shading effects here, they still feel flat in a sense that there's no dark blacks. So I would encourage this person, the same challenge is come in at the end after you get to this point with some real dark blacks and push the shading to the point where you're hitting all the darks and all the light shades. And I think that would contribute to making this piece a little bit more successful. But overall, very good piece. So let's look at this one. This student has very, very successfully shaded individual bones. So let's zoom in and let's, let's look at them. So like, look at, look at these bones. These are very, very good, very good bones. Got some real nice darks, some real nice whites, but then let's zoom out and let's look at the piece as a whole. 
And what do we what do we think to ourselves when we see this piece as a whole? And there's a there's a I think what I think is a little bit of a flaw that that students should be very very careful about. So pause the movie right now and look at this and and just see what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you look at this piece. Which again individually these bones and these skulls are drawn very very nicely. This is very nice drawing, very nice shading. So what's sort of the first thing that comes to your mind? And this relates, what, what it is, is this relates to the last two criticisms, where the last two criticisms I had were, they were sort of afraid of putting in some real dark blacks. Whereas this person, if you look, has some real dark blacks, and it has some real dark whites. And it's each bone is sort of shaded very effectively. But to the eye, the whole piece as a whole feels quite flat. And I think the reason it feels quite flat is because of this gray background. So you have to be very, very careful when you are doing backgrounds below all your drawings because this background color is sort of the natural color of all these objects that were drawn. So what happens is when this color in here matches the color in here, or when the color in here matches the color in here, what it's going to do is it's going to flatten the entire image. It's going to make it feel very, very flat. So this is where a case where I, so I added a layer of, of just white. And when you have the white background rather than the gray background, the contrast in the actual bones that was drawn is actually able to be seen much better. Whereas if you shut off that white background layer, the contrast now is, is diluted. So the contrast is there but it's diluted to the eye because the background is too gray. So you have to be extremely careful when you are importing backgrounds. I would, I would not make the background the same color as sort of the, the bones because that's gonna flatten them, bring them all drawn back together, okay? So this is a piece where I feel like it would be more successful with the white background and then really doing some real dark shadows to again, even push that contrast even further but overall very successful. Now it's interesting that this one comes next because this is a case where you have extreme high contrast. You have the sort of the fattest black lines that you can possibly have and, and they produce what, what I said. It's extreme high contrast between the background and these, and these fat lines. And here's where that's distracting in this case. In this case, so they've, the student is doing a yo-yo, okay, the pieces and components internally of a yo-yo, and ask yourself the question, which of these components should feel light? And which of these components should feel heavy? Ask yourself that question, and for whatever you decide should be heavy, that should be where the heavy contrast is. The contrast is gonna to contribute to the heaviness of an object. So I would suspect that these pieces, okay, the, the actual pieces of the of the yo-yo frame are the pieces that are gonna be the heaviest. So these fat lines should be reserved to those pieces that are heavy. Whereas if you put the fat lines on the string, you're making the string feel artificially heavy. And we know that the string would not be heavy. The string is gonna feel light and soft and floaty, okay? So this is sort of a case where contrast has been used but contrast has been used ineffectively in sort of an inappropriate situation. Whereas the string should feel light, so there should be less contrast. And the yo-yo part should feel heavy, and so that should have the most contrast. And I would, I would, I would applaud this student for taking on a challenging topic. And in a sense that it's very challenging in a sense that the yo-yo is going to have very, very perfect shapes. Okay, But the approach to capturing these perfect shapes was the wrong approach. I would use, again, the pen tool if you're gonna do something that needs perfect shapes, perfect lines, or construct sort of a perfect circle. If you're doing perfect machined objects, this is not a case where you can sort of like do a sketch and you can sort of draw organic lines. You can't do that. Because now what, look, what it looks like is this yo-yo is drawn with organic lines. So it looks like this is like a rock yo-yo, like a, like a yo-yo made by caveman. <laughs> And that's because the lines aren't perfect, but we know in our hearts that yo-yos are machined perfect shapes. So you have to be willing to capture the perfectness of those shapes if you're going to tackle this type of an object. 
a couple more points about this. I think this student has made some progress in learning shading, and so this this piece of the yo-yo here, it would it would in theory be like maybe darker here, and it's getting lighter as it goes down. So that sort of contributes to the shape of the machined object. But I think I think this piece is this flipped over, sitting up, and in this case. The, the shading would not be uniform, okay? If there was light coming in from here or from here or wherever, one of these sides of these pieces is going to be lighter and one of these sides is going to be darker. So while the student is, is learning shading, I would encourage them to think about where is the light coming from and make those parts of your objects lighter and where is the light not hitting, make those parts darker. Okay, let's look at this one. So here is a rare case where I, I think that the text, the imported text actually matches the style of the drawing. And so it feels, it feels perfect. It feels like the text belongs here. And the reason, let me tell you, the reason that this text matches, the reason that this text feels like it's from the same universe is because there are these fine pins here, 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 and the line thickness that this student has drawn with actually matches the line thickness of this cursive text. That is the only reason why the text matches here. So this is a very successful case where a student has successfully imported text that matches. Now I think overall this student has improved a lot and I think that there's a lot of really good things within this image. For example, look at this piece here. The student has actually started capturing texture, okay? And we're gonna focus on this when the painting comes up in the next sections. But the student here has made marks to make these textures feel rough. Like it would feel gritty, it would feel like you could hold this in, in your hand. Whereas in this, it feels very, very smooth. So the student has attempted to capture the texture of these objects, which is a tough thing to do. So I wanna award the student for taking on that challenge and doing it very successfully. Now I would also say the student has really succeeded here in capturing what the blades of the Swiss Army knife would feel like, what, what they would look like, how they would be really captured in real life. And they've done this here by different line thicknesses so again, this is not easy to do, but the student has done it quite well. So good, good props here for trying hard things and succeeding. Now, there are a couple criticisms I have. Of course, like these round objects would obviously in a machine situation be perfectly round. So they would have to, the student would have to approach drawing these differently. This is not something you can do a sketch with. You have to use the tools of Photoshop to construct perfect circles. That's one thing, one criticism I have here. Uh, similar with uh, um, the corkscrew, the corkscrew are perfectly machined objects, and for the most part, like the the um, bottle opener, the knives, have they've captured the perfect machining of these pieces properly. Whereas there's some of these that feel out of place, like the corkscrew because it's not perfect, these round things because they're not perfect. Um, they could there could be improvement here. And I would say, again, I think this is an improvement. Um, this was the same student who had the the praying mantis, the praying mantis where the gray shading was, and I said it was jarring. And here they've done sort of the similar shading and it's less jarring. So they've, get it, they've gotten much better. The student has gotten much better at shading, but I would encourage them to push the shading to the point where it's even even more smooth, okay? And this is a situation, these knives and the Swiss Army knife is a situation where the shading has to be infinitely smooth, perfectly smooth. So you have to be very careful what style you're drawing with when you draw objects like this. But great work, lots of improvement here, and I think the student is getting much more comfortable with Photoshop, very good. Okay, so let's talk about this one. So the first thing I would point out is I think this student had some issues with installing Photoshop because I have turned on this layer and I, I think that this is, um, this is, hang on. So I'm not sure if the student did this drawing and then is trying to transfer it into Photoshop or if this drawing is like a reference that they're trying to translate into Photoshop. I'm not sure. 
and I would say that this is a good start, but I think it's clear from like the layers that the student hasn't quite understood how to use layers in Photoshop. So I would encourage them to really focus on that. It's gonna get more and more challenging in the future uh, in the class if you're not sort of focusing on the techniques that, that I've taught in the past. With that said, I think this student has improved a lot in the sense that in the last assignment, what they turned in was a hand drawing. So they've gotten into the Photoshop program and they're starting to and they're starting to sort of use it. I would encourage you to continue to learn the Photoshop program. So here's the first one where we see a tortoise or a turtle and they have actually done the, the shell, which is nice, which is it looks really good. And this is a good example of if you again, if you go back to the yo-yo example and you ask yourself which of these objects should feel the heaviest. It should be the turtle shell and the turtle shell is utilizing contrast in a way where it does feel the heaviest. Then the second thing that's the heaviest is either the skull or the, I don't know if this is a hip, but you can see how here how you're, the, the students are using contrast and the heaviness of lines to make objects feel heavy. And that's a really good start and that's a really good skill to be developing. The couple criticisms I have is is that the, the line consistency is, I think, an issue here. So if you look at these real light, tiny bones, um, it does kind of feel strange that the lines on these light, tiny bones are very, very small, and yet the lines on the turtle shell are extremely large. I think that might be an issue of these were perhaps drawn very large and then scaled down. You do have to be careful when you're scaling down things, you're now changing the consistency of your lines. So you do have to be careful about that. So I, I think this, this one could be improved a little bit by coming back in and sort of boldening some of these this line work in here. And I think that would contribute to make the piece feel a little bit um, a little bit more even. But in the opposite sense of that, the, the heaviness of these objects is captured quite well. So that's a couple comments I would say about this one. I would also say this text here is again sort of sort of distracting. Um, it doesn't necessarily feel like it's a part of this universe. The signature feels fine. Signature feels like it's a part of this universe. So I would, again, I'm, if you want the text, I would come back in and rewrite the text unless it matches within the universe of your lines. All right, so here's another one. And I think the student is is definitely making improvements on capturing shading. The one, the one issue that I have with this is all the shading is so gray. There's, there's not enough real whites like in here there would be some real whites in here and in here there would be some real whites up here so i i would encourage a student to continue continue learning the shading as you're doing it you're making fantastic improvements but continue to try to push the levels of the whites and the darks to sort of enhance the contrast here and enhancing the contrast in a way that captures the real three-dimensionality of the shapes. I would also add cross-hatching. Cross-hatching here could have, could have really augmented this piece a lot. I think it could have contributed a lot. So let's look at this one. I think this one is a good start, but some of it feels a little too scratchy, a little too sketchy. So for instance, the, the claws and these bones feel pretty sketchy in the sense that they haven't captured it with a clean line whereas these ones do feel like they were captured with a clean line so it's just a case of where some things feel out of place um, where these bones don't feel like they match these bones and that's because of the the line consistency is completely different i think though i think the skulls are captured quite well i think that there's good contrast here um, I'm, I'm not sure what the what the lines in in this area would be. I think this area should be kind of like completely black. But definitely, definitely getting a good getting a good skull and getting some good bones. But I think there's an issue of consistency here. Things don't necessarily feel like they're from the same universe. Here's Gwendolyn's piece, and I would say about this one is this is sort of opposite of what I had just said where everything here does feel like it's coming from the same universe. Everything feels like it's in place. And there's been a really good and successful um, capturing of sort of the membranous features of these dragonfly wings. 
So these dragonfly wings actually do feel like like they look like they would feel to your fingers. And, and so it's a good a good means of capturing the texture that was used here. So this is a successful piece. And I know that Gwendolyn here was trying something new and trying something a little bit challenging in a sense that um, pushing pushing themselves to to do things quickly and sometimes it's a really useful skill in illustration and it's something that needs to be practiced so i think what was what was attempted here is was an attempt to to finish the entire project which is i think a noble thing but what will happen with that is is things will start to become a little bit more abstract which is again i think i think that's what gwendolyn was going for here but I, I, I wish a little bit little bit more attention to the eyes. Dragonfly eyes are very beautiful. So I, one thing I wish for is just a little bit more attention in the eyes. As much attention in the eyes as, as you would have in the wings. And I think that would sort of help to um, help to complete the piece. And I would I would perhaps move the move the head up here and treat the eyes sort of as equally as as the wings were treated. And in that sense, what would happen then is it, it sort of navigates your eye to walk through the, the the entire image where I would start here and then I move to here and then I move to here and then I move to here and then to balance it out move up here to look at some beautiful eyes and then come back around and cycle through again you kind of want to start to learn how um, as you look at a piece think about what what it is your eye is drawn to and think about what's happening, where your eye is going, where your eye is traveling through the piece. And what often contributes to making pieces feel complete and even is that there's a nice path that your eye naturally follows and continues to loop through. And that's sort of what contributes to making things complete. So I think just a little bit more work here, but I know, I, I, I think I know what Gwendolyn was trying here. So here's a frog skeleton and you can see that the consistency is quite good here. So everything, it, again, feels like it's from the same universe. I'm, I'm probably repeating myself much. But what I'm hoping for here, what I'm really wishing for is a little bit more attention to the skull, a little bit more attention. Skulls are very, very beautiful and they're kind of like the capstone in, in sort of any skeletal piece. And so I, I was, I'm wishing for a little bit more attention and detail in, this, in the skull here. And I think that would contribute a lot to making this piece a little bit better. Also the text, text is very, is, is very fat lined here. You don't see any lines that are as fat as the text. So relating to where your eye is drawn, what my eye is drawn to is not actually the drawing. What my eye is drawn to and magnetized to is the text. And the reason that is, is because the text feels so heavy, so much heavier than everything else that it sort of is monopolizing my eye. So I, I would I would get rid of this text or put it in a region where it's not so magnetic. So here's a piece of bones from a red fox. This one is pretty fantastic. So I opened this one in Photoshop and I noticed these blue lines and I know Dr. Liu had some issues with some of these blue lines. These are guides. If you want to shut these off, let's see if I can do this. It should be view, clear guides. Okay, so that, that works. Some, we've, some people have had some issues of getting rid of those. Okay, so now let me zoom in here and look at this one. So here's a great example of how line consistency can make things feel complete. So this piece feels complete for sure as a line drawing. It's a, definitely a complete line drawing. And I know how much time that this took. I know how much time this took, which is why, um, again, I, I won't criticize too much in the sense of it not, not being complete, in the sense of not having shading, not having um, stippling or crosshatching, because I know the time that it takes to complete a line drawing of this quality. But I would say that I mean, this looked like a, this is a really exciting piece, and and this looks. I really want. I would really want to see this piece finished because it's just a, such a beautiful piece, such a good organization, such good knolling, and such good line work that I sort of know um, where this piece could go if they finished it, and it would be a really nice finished work. So again, I wouldn't. I would definitely never disparage a student for taking on something this challenging and really doing the effort to complete all the bones because it looks fantastic and all the work here was was great. I would just. I would just maybe consider taking this up in the future and finishing it, and and it will look fantastic. But great job, great work, and great job taking on a real 
tough, challenging issue in a sense of capturing everything, organizing everything, and making it look real good. So here's this one, I would say, again, kind of similar vein in some of the other ones, is that I just think this piece is not quite done. Um, I, I want to see sort of all these bones, sort of according to the assignment, pulled out and then nulled. But I think just in general, just the start of the skull, it's a really good start. Uh, it perhaps needs some cross hatching, perhaps needs some boldening of these lines to make it a little bit better. And then obviously some cleanup of, of the shading. So I think the student was just not quite done. All right, let's look at this one. I think this is perhaps a cow, something like a cow. Um, and this one is really beautiful, really fantastic. And you can see kind of what I've been saying before about how cross hatching just sort of like naturally lends itself to bones. Bones, just anytime you cross hatch on bones, it always looks good. The skull here is very, very nice, very nice. And uh, this is my favorite bone here. I want to zoom in on that one. See, look at here. Look at the interesting style that this person is using. Um, and the cross hatching, so they're actually cross hatching with some grays, which is nice. Okay, so they're not just cross hatching with pure blacks, they're actually cross hatching with, with some grays, some different tones. You can see that here, you can see it here, you can see it here. Three different shades of cross hatching. And they're combining these cross hatching with some real nice gray washes to get the tonality. I do have some comments about in general. I don't like the drawing with the with the blurred brush. I, I don't I, usually I don't like that. I like the sharp edges when when I'm drawing, especially when I'm drawing both bones. So I would say just just a point of improvement. Although I know this might this might be the style, and this one in general looks really good. So I don't want to I don't want to sort of tell people how to do things when they're already doing things really really well. Um, but I do think these lines would look better with like it's it's kind of weird that it's since these lines are quite sharp And then all of a sudden it gets kind of like blurry here I'm not sure that that helps. Maybe it does, but I, I'm not sure that my eye wants to see that But again here also I would really just say really fantastic Attention to detail and the sort of I, I don't know what you'd call this But I call this like the knuckling of bones like it like look at these nubs Really, really fantastic attention to detail here in, in the knuckling of these bones. And also attention to detail in sort of like the cracks. Cracks always look good on bones. Again, that's why cross hatching just sort of like naturally looks good is because it kind of facilitates cracks. Look at the vertebrae. These are the best vertebrae I've seen in, in all the assignments. These are just fantastic and, and completely beautiful. I mean, each of these vertebrae in itself is so, oh, let me zoom in more each of these vertebrae in itself is really pleasing to look at i mean look at how beautiful just just these vertebrae are so again really fantastic what i would say is attention to detail here and really just really really great work so if you're ever in doubt about what to do um take note from this student that attention to detail is really a clear way to really make great illustrations attention to detail so that's a good one to end on great work everyone i love the old bones this is one of my favorite assignments